All right, I am joined now by UFC lightweight Cajun Johnson, who's got some big news. He's going to be opening up a TriStar gym in British Columbia. Cajun, how you doing? Uh, really good, man. Really good. Stoked. Sitting here in the gym right now. You can see it kind of uh, unfolding around me and behind me. Yeah, things are going well. It's huge news, and then we'll we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, I got to talk about you uh, right off the bat. You've got a, quite the storied career. Um, one cool thing is that you grew up in British Columbia, like myself. I grew up in Tawasson. You grew up in Burns Lake. Uh, what was it like growing up in Burns Lake? Uh, it was uh, it's different than a lot of people have grown up that that are living in like urban centers. You know, uh, very very different. It's a very small community. You know, like a two thousand people ish around, including the surrounding area and stuff. So. I grew up on like a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. Like we had a we had a generator, we had a wood cook stove, wood heat, like packed in drinking water. Uh, had to go do laundry in town. Like, yeah, very very different upbringing. Um, but it was amazing. It taught me like a lot of work ethic and uh, and strong principles. And yeah, so it's good. And and how did that sort of lead you to to mixed martial arts? Um, well, it wasn't a direct path, you know. Like uh, I had was kind of a troubled youth so I got kicked out of school when I was in grade eight and uh, I had to there's only one high school in my town right so I had to move to Prince George where my dad lived and um, and yeah so I moved there and it was there that I started training at, under Bill Mahood at when I was like 17 in uh, grade 12 I started training under him and yeah I got one knockout my first fight and that was it <laughs> that's all I needed, and, you know? And, and you got hooked, yeah, exactly. Yeah, hook, said. line, and sinker, you know? Oh. <laughs> and what type of influence was Bill on your career? Because I don't know, you know, we're saying the name here. I know who Bill Mahood is. Uh, a lot of people probably don't, but he's a UFC veteran. He's a guy that's been in the sport for a very long time. Um, how much of an influence was he on your career early on? Uh, the biggest influence. Like, um, he was the, he's always been the constant in my career, no matter who I've been training under or or uh, where, what city I've been training in, he's always in my corner. Um, he's always there for whatever it is I need. Like at first he was like a real coach, um, and then later on it turned more into a training partner, and now it's more just like a mentor and a guide, you know. So um, he's got an incredible amount of experience. Uh, now he's he's doing big things in the amateur circuit for our country as well. He's the president of uh, the amateur the uh, the Canadian Amateur National Team Federation. So. Um, yeah, he's doing big things, man, and I'm just following in his footsteps, you know, and I'm trying to do the same types of things for the younger generation coming up. Like, I started uh, coaching Jamie, and then now it's becoming almost more like we're training partners, uh, um, and then eventually it'll just become like I'm his mentor, you know what I mean? So it's the same kind of cycle repeating itself. It's a really cool thing, actually. And you've got a lot of experience. Uh, you made your pro debut in 2002, and you fought for all types of promotions in Canada, King of the Cage, MFC. Um, looking at sort of your career outside the UFC, what's sort of been the most memorable fight for you? Mm. Putting you on the spot here. No, no, not at all. That's actually not even a very difficult question. Um, I fought in raw combat against Douglas Evans, and that was really the, yeah, that was the fight in which I, I under, finally understood which... Um, energy to bring into the cage like I had always had mixed success sometimes I would be really like aggressive and sometimes I would be kind of passive and uh, non-committal so I I had a trouble finding which energy zone to fight in where my where my zone where my body was best you know um, and I found eventually I found that excited happy but still aggressive type uh, state and yeah, it, once I figured it out, then I went on another tear, you know? And, and you know, being up here in Canada myself, uh, I first became aware of you actually in your fight with Ryan Healy in, in the MFC. Um, you obviously, uh, you know, got got the win in that one. And, and you know, this was back in the day when we used to get um, what was called HDNet in Canada. We don't get Access TV anymore. Um, but I remember <laughs> no, thinking don't. at the time... I remember thinking at the time, uh, man, this would be a great guy on The Ultimate Fighter, uh, you know, to, to showcase. Because you really, like, I remember, I remember your post-fight interview and everything. Very entertaining. Obviously, someone who can not only bring it fight-wise, but can also, uh, you know, be quite good on the mic. And uh, sure enough, you were on The Ultimate Fighter, uh, Tough Nations. Um, what was that experience like for you? I mean, obviously, the, the broken jaw is obviously probably not the, the best thing to remember. But I'm sure it was uh, nice to kind of uh, meet some of your other uh, fellow Canadians on the show. Oh, it was awesome, dude. Like, from where I was in my life at that time. Like, it was 100% necessary for me to do that show. If it wasn't for that show, I probably would have been already retired. 
Um, I had said that year that if, if Christmas rolled around, if New Year's rolled around and I still hadn't been able to find a fight, I was going to have to go and search something else out because nobody would fight me, right? Um, and the show came along and I was in a situation where not only was I able, I, was I guaranteed fights, but I was living in a mansion in the forest with free food. <laughs> I was so stoked. I didn't know, like, it was worth the broken jaw. <laughs> it was nothing, you know, whatever, man. Um, and even the broken jaw fight, like I learned uh, between that fight and my Tai Hyun Bong fight, that's what allowed those, the, the lessons that I, that I learned there are what allowed me to create the new style that I'm fighting with. And now it's a whole nother level, dude. Like I'm so many, I've leveled up so many levels above the rest of my competition in this division because of those lessons, because of those failures and losses. Um, it's a really exciting time for me. Yeah. And, and, you know, obviously uh, people remember you uh, now for, for the, the music video you made recently, The List. Uh, music is a big part of your career. I actually knew about your music thing before that. Uh, there's a video surfacing. If anyone's seen it, you and Ryan Ford freestyle rapping is one of my <laughs> favorite videos. Um, I, I, I love that. If, if you haven't seen it, go check it out because you guys were holding your own pretty well. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, man. Before I can lay it down, you know, we both are, we're, we're both entertainers, so we're multi-talented. So, yeah. And, and besides, I know you said in past interviews, LL Cool J was a big influence in your career. Is there anyone else music-wise that really sort of influenced you? Oh, so I'm like really the the biggest musical influence that I, that that there's ever been in my life is Immortal Technique. Um, not because he he not just because he influenced my, me musically, but also he influenced me me spiritually, um, just an evolving and grow, uh, growing my uh, my mind really more than anything. Um, he really opened my eyes to a lot of things in society, and uh, yeah, I'll be forever grateful to that dude for that, man. Now, now that music video, The List, um, you know, it was popping all over social media. You, uh, you, you called it Ally Quinta because of his nickname, because you guys are both called Ragin'. Um, yeah. I know there was a back and forth on social media, but has there been any follow-up to that? Have you, have you guys talked at all? <laughs> uh, we've talked like on social media, you know what I mean? But that's about it. He's really upset. I don't really understand why he's upset. I made a music video and, and I said I wanted to fight him like we're fighters, right? So um, I didn't say anything bad about him other than that his nickname didn't rhyme and that maybe he should be called the Ninja because it just sounds better, you know? Al the Ninja, I Quinta, that would be dope. Um, but there's a whole bunch of angry Al actually really suits him as well because he is really raging, like, ah, you know, he's a, he's a, he's very reactive like anything that you do or say he just like hawks out um so angry owl would work um but yeah he just got really upset for some reason uh, i don't think he understands who i am or why i'm doing what i'm doing or any of my cognition or mindset but yeah he likes to get angry so he pretty much is looking for things in the world to get angry about and right now well recently i was that yeah, and, and you kind of gave away the fact that you're Canadian because it was funny watching that exchange because, you know, Al's getting angrier and angrier and you're just kind of saying, oh, like, uh, well, you know, like just very like polite responses and he's still like getting <laughs> aggravated. So I thought that was really cool. If you guys can dig up the, the, the Twitter exchange, it was uh, it was classic. <laughs> it's um, quite, yes, actually. Last uh, question on the music thing. Uh, any plans to produce any more tracks? Uh, definitely. I have one written and, uh, and produced right now. It just needs to be mixed and mastered. But uh, I'm not planning on releasing it quite yet. Um, I most likely release it in the beginning of the next shot of video for it yet. So, uh, yeah, that'll be coming, but most likely at the beginning of the next fight camp. Good stuff. Um, now, uh, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about the gym here, uh, TriStar Vancouver. Um, how did this sort of all come together and what sort of prompted you to, to go about and uh, start your own gym? Um, well, it was a whole bunch of things, really, a whole bunch of things. First of all, I have been struggling in Montreal for a long time. Uh, I make minimum wage in UFC, right? So I make 10 and 10. Um, I've recently signed a new contract where I make 12 and 12, but, um, yeah, I'm still at the, I'm still at the bottom of the heap, right? And I'm not able to fight all the time, uh, unfortunately, because of the um, multitude of years that I've spent as a professional athlete, my body uh, will not allow me to compete at the same rate as like a Sage Northcott, um, right? So I'm not able to fight as often. Uh, so I don't make a living wage really from UFC. Um, 
because of that, I've had to figure out other aspects. I'm still on the bench. I'm not going to be able to fight until the fall. So where I was, I would have been homeless by now if I had stayed in Montreal. So I made the decision, okay, well, I'm obviously not supposed to be here. Uh, there was a couple other things. My intuition had been telling me that that uh, that BC was the place for a while, like, but I was just kind of like pushing it aside, like, no, I know what I'm doing. You know, brain thinks it knows everything. Um, but, uh, but yeah, eventually I got a really in-your-face lesson, like, the universe just, like, slapped me in the face pretty much and was like, dude, you need to move or some bad things are going to happen. So um, so now I made the move. I just got it. I packed my car full of stuff. I got in it. I drove across the country doing a couple seminars on the way back to pay for it. Um, and, yeah, and now I'm here. Uh, the gym, though, I obviously was real, had, had to figure out how I was going to live in Vancouver. Like, it's an expensive city, right? So I started uh, talking to different people. Oh, maybe I could teach a couple classes here, a couple classes there, like at different gyms and make that work. And then um, my best friend, actually, uh, Rochelle, who's also one of the partners of the business, um, her boyfriend was starting was was uh, gonna open a gym. Uh, he's a great friend of mine as well, Dayan Kayich. Uh, he he had already got the building. Uh, he'd already got the the build the business plan. It had already kind of been figured out because um, we were talking about it a little bit. I was thinking about maybe we were maybe gonna open a gym and I was gonna stay in Montreal. We had been thinking about that a few months before, and then we we're like, oh, it's not gonna work, so we just stopped thinking about it. Then I'm gonna move back, and slowly but surely, it all kind of fell into place. Um, and now there's now we're all here. Um, my partners are over there right now, working away. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's Rochelle and Dan. And um, and yeah, and now we're here. We're building and it's getting done. Uh, the soft opening is July 16th, uh, and then the uh, grand opening is going to be UFC Vancouver August 27th. Perfect. Oh, I like it. That's uh, going to be great. And, you know, was, was there any, uh, how, how did it sort of work with uh, keeping this TriStar name? Was that something you had to talk to Faraz about? How did that sort of work out? Yeah, me and Faraz have been talking for a long time because he knows, uh, I've, I've made, he, he, everybody pretty much knows how much I love coaching. Um, whoever needs coaching, if I'm not training, I'm coaching them, you know. So um, we'd been talking for a while about me opening up a TriStar gym. Uh, TriStar Gym Vancouver, actually, but the plan was to for me to finish my fight career and finish do all my fight career in Montreal and live there for the next five, six, seven years, whatever that is, and then move home and open a gym. But uh, yeah, yeah, we make plans and God laughs, right? So <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <yeah. laughs> like apparently not. I'm supposed to do this, so now I'm here, and it all worked out, man. It's really cool. Like I got so many new things happening for me right now. Like I. My girlfriend was living up in Prince George uh, with her daughter, and she had was looking for a new place to live at this exact same time. So I'm like, okay, well, let's just move down to Vancouver together. So I got like a new gym, a new house, a new family all at the same time. Uh, it's pretty amazing, really, really cool change, changing time for me, you know. Congratulations, man. That, that's awesome. Seems like everything's uh, sort of sort of coming together at the right time. Um, what type of facility uh, can we expect? Uh, you know, obviously there's going to be you know a cage, I assume. But what, what are sort of some of the things that people can look forward to when they go to the gym? Uh, well, we're working on developing a very multi-dimensional program. Um, so uh, we're, we're we have half of the facility is a strength and conditioning facility. Um, so we've got a bunch of kettlebells, squat racks, plates, bars, uh, dumbbells, everything you need uh, for cardio, strength, and conditioning. And then we have a uh, matted space uh, that is going to be caged in, wall mats. And then we are going to have a, a striking section uh, in the back with some bags and some mirrors and, uh, and speed bags, up and down balls and all that. Uh, so we're going to be running everything we're not like most of the gyms in the area we're we're modeling this after tristar gym like i was that's why i was a, a one of the main reasons apparently that i was out there was to really learn their system and uh and bring that over here so all of our fighters that are so talented in vancouver because we have a great many uh talented fighters that but they all have to leave all the time right they all have to they used to go to florida dennis would always go to florida and then dennis moved to try 
TriStar, so everybody started going to TriStar. Rory's, Rory's in TriStar. I'm at TriStar. All the BC guys got to go all the way across the country to a place where we don't speak the language. Like, I would like to um, make it better for those kids that are coming up that didn't have the opportunity. I want to give that to them, you know. So that's what we're kind of basing this facility off of, a family gym um, that is at the same time an elite level uh, martial arts facility. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned uh, kids, you mentioned up and comers, a uh, guy that I've had on my show and had the pleasure of speaking with Jamie Siraj just won the BFL title uh, this past weekend. Um, how good is this kid? And uh, how much how cool is it to kind of, you know, live vicariously through this guy who's making his career at this point in his life? Uh, it's pretty amazing, actually, to watch them grow up. Uh, it really feels like I'm, I'm like his stepdad. <laughs> he's He's a really, really, he's, like his martial arts skill is phenomenal. The amount of of, of um, difficulty that he's been able to endure and uh, and get over uh, is also incredible. But what is really uh, the most astounding is how great of a human he's become. Like not become, but grown into. Um, he could have gone a very, very different way. When I met this kid, he was not headed uh, right down the right path. He was headed down a very destructive path. Um, and it's been really amazing being able to influence him in the way that brought him to the path he is now because he's something special. Like Not only does he have the physical skill, the work ethic, the talent, the physical, the physical talent, uh, he also has that drive that you can't teach like no matter what the you i've seen the this kid go through a lot of stuff that would make grown men cry and as a kid like as a 15 16 year old kid he's been dealing with these situations um and he just continues to go forward no matter what the world throws at him and that is that is why he's going to be the champion of the world one day um and it's not very far off uh it it's not super close just because we have to do things the right way and um, I'm learning from the lessons that uh, I had to learn coming up the hard way and fighting everybody. Our, he's already been tested. I started testing him when he was a child fighting grown men um, but now that he's pro everything's everything is for a reason here so we've got to be very strategic in the way we handle things but it's within he'll be in the UFC I see within two years and um, I think within four within four he'll minimum be within tight title contention if not have the belt i like it i like it well, we're certainly excited for it uh before i let you go here you mentioned the fall is kind of when you want to return is the ufc vancouver card i guess that's that's kind of probably not going to happen just because you got everything with the gym right now i wish i wish it's like the universe testing me it's like oh here's something that would be amazing for your ego would you like that i'll also give you a bunch of money <laughs> you know what i mean uh, but i know my body isn't ready for that i'm still not a hundred percent in rehab yet i'm rebuilding my shoulder from the ground up like my labrum got torn off like there was nothing holding on anymore not even like not even a little fiber was holding on it was off right so they sewed it on and the rehab is going really well um it's getting very very strong my arms are becoming more like legs all the time but it if I rush this, if I rush, then the rest of my career is a wash. And it's very, very important that I'm smart right now. So, uh, yeah, it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what's right, and I'm going to take the time I need and come back when I'm meant to come back, and then greatness will happen. What about uh, there's rumblings in December. They might do a card out here in Toronto. Not entirely sure if that's, that's going to happen, but it sounds like they're going to do one more Canadian event. Does that interest you? But I, I know you do like fighting overseas as well. So, uh, Like if it's not hometown, I don't really care where I fight. Um, if it's overseas, great. Uh, if, I would like to do something in North America just because I think that the North American fans see it a little bit more and I want to blow up my name as big as possible uh, in the amount of time that I have left uh, in this career, right? So I would like to do North America. My ideal show, to tell you the truth, is New York. Uh, to go into enemy territory over there and uh, take out Aya Quinta. That would be awesome. But great. Joe Silva says, no, you're not allowed. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe the fans convince them different that, that I should fight Aya Quinta. Um, yeah. But e even if I can't fight Aya Quinta in New York, I'd fight anybody in New York. I'll fight anybody in the division at this point. Um, yeah, I don't have time to waste. So anybody, I don't care. Yeah.
stuff. Well, we certainly look forward to it. We certainly look forward to the opening of your gym, uh, Cajun. Really happy for you, man. I uh, appreciate you joining me here on the program. Just to remind my audience where they can get a hold of you on social media and any information about TriStar Gym in BC, let the, let the audience know right now. Okay, so yeah, let's start out with TriStar Gym because that's the, that's the, that's the main focus right now. Uh, so TriStar Gym Facebook is just TriStar Vancouver. And then on Instagram, we are also TriStar underscore Vancouver. Uh, uh, Twitter, we are TriStar underscore Van City. And then on Twitter, I am at I am Ragin. On Instagram, the Ragin one T H A R A G I N, and then the number one. And uh, you can get a hold of me on Periscope as well as. What is my Periscope? I am Ragin. Yeah, because that's connected to Twitter. So yeah, Periscope at I am Ragin. Yeah. <laughs>